Hello, I'm Bruce Shaney, and this is my second video on Marble Tracks. Now, in the previous video, we took a look at a number of tracks that I built for use in my classroom. In this video, I'm going to take a look at some basic building techniques by building a loop-to-loop -loop track that I can add to my collection. Now, when I first started building these, I did use something else that was quite a bit harder to work with than what we're using here. My first track set was made with glass tubing. I used a blowtorch to heat it to a very high temperature and then bent them to the shape that I wanted. Now, I like glass tubing worked well, but as you can expect, it was very fragile and I had to be careful with it. Now, soon after building that, I discovered this other material at a hardware store. This is sold as shelf bracket tracking. It's sold in six foot lengths. Now, I was amazed at how many uses I could find for this track. It could be as simple as propping each end up a little bit and then putting a series of balls on here and looking at some collisions. We'll try one ball. And let's try two. And three. Now, if we want to build tracks with this, it's very simple. Uh, my first suggestion is that before you start handling it too much, you might want to take some very fine-grained sandpaper and go over the edges very lightly to remove any burrs that are on it. Uh, but once you've done that, this material is very nice because you can bend it by hand very easily into whatever shape you want. Now let's give that a quick try. And there, we've just made a track. So as you can see, it doesn't take much to get started. Now if you want to build a very simple track, you might want to make something like this, which would be an example of a high-low track, and it's simply a race down to the bottom of this track. So I'd take two golf balls in this case and release them. So in all these pieces, it really comes down to deciding what I want the track to look like, bending the material to that shape, and then building a frame to support it. So let's go through that process. I'd like to add a loop-to-loop -loop track to my collection. So the first thing I need is a design. The shape I'm going for is going to be something like this. The track will come down, it'll loop, and then go back up again. I'm going to have to support it here, probably in here somewhere, and then also out here. So my next step is to now bend the track. I start at the one end. I think that looks about right. Now that we have the track shaped, now we need to build supports for it. So I'm going to have a plywood base. It's going to look something like that. So we're going to use a 2x4, prop it alongside here, and pretty much like that. And let's see, we'll cut an angle. So now I have to cut this shape out. All right, here's our support cut out and sanded. We're going to mount this right here. My next step is drawing three pilot holes for the screws. This part's kind of tricky. I'm going to drive the first screw up from the bottom into that support. Then I'll turn it over, and I'll screw the other ones from the top going down. It's much easier this way. Now the next step is we want to anchor the track to that support, and for that we're going to use these very small screws. A little bit of masking tape to hold it in place. That looks pretty good. Now I'll drive three small screws through the track into the support. All 
All right, next wank are the track to the board. Right about there looks good. Hold it in place. I'll use two screws here on each section. Here's the second support. It's attached to the base the same way the tallest one is. And our third support. All right, so here we have our finished track. Now let's take off the tape and give it a try, see how it works. Yeah, it works pretty good. I have another ball here, let's try it again. Ah, that one didn't make it. Now that we have the track done, it would be an interesting investigation to compare the height of the loop to the minimum height that we could release the ball and still have it complete the loop to loop. It looks like it's about right here. Now in our next installment, we'll take a look at the calculated value and compare it to this measured value and see how the two compare. So I hope you see you don't need an extensive wood shop to build these tracks. Uh, some pieces of wood scrap for the bases, this shelf tracking material, which is really nice to work with for the tracks themselves, and a the design. Now I do have one last bit of advice I'd like to offer before I sign off here, and that is for a track like this, instead of bending the metal first, I ended up designing and cutting out the wood frame. I put that together, and then I put it up on blocks, and I'd bend the track as best I could and then use these clamps to help draw down the track tight against the wood. And if I didn't get it tight enough, then when I applied the screws and put the screws in, that would take it the rest of the way. Well, I hope you found this brief review of my tracks and how to build one interesting and helpful. And as always, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.